thank God for the shepherd of this church. The angel of this church. Amen. Amen. You have a great pastor. Yes, yes, Lord. You have a humble pastor. Yes, Lord. To God be the glory. I thank you for once again giving me an opportunity to stand before you to declare the word of God. Amen. Amen. And not to prolong, we ask that you would stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Coming from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, and verse 16. 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 14, 18, 21, and 22. And the word of God read accordingly. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts unto them. He makes the whole body fit together and unites it through the support of every joint. As each and every part does its job, he makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. 1 Corinthians 12, 14. Our bodies don't have just one part. They have many parts. But God has put all parts of our body together in the way that he decided is best. So that's why the eyes cannot say they don't need the hand. That's also why the head cannot say it doesn't need the feet. In fact, we cannot get along without the parts of the body that seem to be the weakest, amen? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. We pray now, dear Lord, that you would give us preaching power yes. to make your word effective. Prepare our hearts. Prepare our minds. Yes. And then prepare our hands that we might do your will. And oh God, hide me behind the cross yes. that they may see less of me and more of you. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable, O oh Lord, my blessed strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today I want to share with you from the subject, from the theme, you are important. Amen. 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 I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them you are important. You are important. You are valuable. You are valuable. Amen. Amen. And I want us to focus on verse number 16 in Ephesians chapter 4. Our focus verse. And I'm reading to you from God's Word translation. It says he makes the whole body fit together and unites it through the support of every joint. And as each and every part does its job, he makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Amen? Amen. And so the question I want to pose to you this morning for you to ponder on is why am I important? Why am I important? Amen? Amen. And so the Apostle Paul writes this letter to the church at Ephesus to allow them to know how important they are to the body of Christ. 
And then he gives them, as we go throughout the text, several reasons. He says that you are important because of, number one, who you are. Okay. You're important because of who you are. Number two, you are important because without you, the body of Christ is incomplete. Without you, the body of Christ is incomplete. And then finally he says that you are important because Christ redeemed you with his precious blood. Oh yes he did. Amen? And so because of their importance to the body of Christ, Paul now encourages the believers at Ephesus to walk worthy of their call. Because Christ now has called them out of a life of sin and darkness into his marvelous light. And so he focuses on sharing with them how to live out their faith in the spirit of unity. Amen. Paul describes and he compares this body of believers at Ephesus to the human body. Amen. So I need you all to help me. We're going to take a little inventory. Okay? And so like like the human body, which has many parts. Well, Amen. Amen. We have one head, yes. two eyes, yes. two ears, yes. one nose, yes. one mouth, yes. two arms, yes. two hands, yes. ten fingers, yes. one torso, yes. two legs, mm -hmm. two feet, mm -hmm. ten toes, yes. two knees, yes. one mat, yes. one back. Yeah. One spine, yeah. one heart, yeah. one liver, yeah. two lungs, one gallbladder, yeah. one brain, yeah. one esophagus, uh -huh. one stomach, yeah. two kidneys, yeah. one appendix, yeah. two intestines, yeah. one spleen, yeah. over 20 major arteries, and then at least 34 major veins. Just to name a few. Amen. Yet all of these parts of the body, all of these members, make up only one body. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And so it is with the body of Christ, the church, which is in Christ Jesus, who is the head of the body. Yes. Amen? Amen? And so the church is made up of many members. Amen. That is believers. And, and God has placed each member in the body to help build up the church in love. Amen. Amen. And to aid in the building up of the church, Paul reminds them that God gave each one of us a gift. Amen. 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 Each one of you, God has placed in you a gift. And so verse number eight tells us, it says that when he arose from the dead, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives. And it says that he gave gifts unto men. Uh, you recall the Apostle Paul when he took Timothy as his son in the ministry, he said, stir up the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. I want to tell you this morning, each of you, you've got to stir up the gift of God that he has placed in you. You can't let it lie dormant. You can't be bench warmers. Each one of us 
set them in the body as it pleased him. And so what it's simply saying is that when we accepted Jesus as our Savior, yeah. and when we joined ourselves, you thought you did it all by yourself. Oh, yeah. But when we joined ourselves to the body of Christ, God was presenting you and I as a gift oh, yeah. to the church. Oh, and not only did he present us as a gift to the church,
they, they have been made to feel invisible. Have you ever felt like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nobody sees them. Nobody uh, believes that they have anything to contribute. They, they believe that they don't fit in anywhere. That they are just taking up space and in the way. Yes, yes. I read a true story a couple days ago as I was reading my daily word. And it was the story about the son of a famous person. His name is Todd Lincoln. He is the son of Abraham Lincoln. And his best friend, friend wrote, whose name was Nicholas Murray Butler, he wrote that Todd often made the comment, he says, nobody wanted me for Secretary of War. They wanted Abraham Lincoln's son. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted me for Minister of England. They wanted Abraham Lincoln's son. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted me for president of the Pullman Company. They wanted Abraham Lincoln's son. I say all of that because they didn't see Todd for himself. They didn't see him for the gift that he was and the value that he had. They only saw him as Abraham Lincoln's son. Have you ever Or what can I supply mm -hmm. 
that the church needs. Amen. The answer is you. You are the gift. And the gift that God has placed within you. You are what the church needs. The Bible says that when Christ who died for our sins, your sins and mine, when he rose from the dead, when he led captives captive, and he gave gifts unto men, the Bible says that grace was his gift. That unconditional love was his gift to you. That salvation was his gift to you. That deliverance from the power and penalty of sin was his gift to you. And then God gave us tangible gifts. He gave us the gift of helps. The gift of healing, of, of teaching and preaching, of Because of what Christ gave us. Well, yeah. uh, that I cannot say to the hand yeah. that I don't have any need. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. And and the head can't say to the feet, I, oh, I, I don't need no, you. That's right. But I need for you to tell your neighbor, uh, you can't tell me you don't need me. <laughs> don't need me. All right, and so those members, Christ says, Paul says that those members of the body which seem to be weaker or unimportant are necessary. All right, Tell your neighbor, say you're necessary. necessary. Oh yes, you are. Tell them, say you're necessary. necessary. Oh yes, yes, I need you to survive. Yes. In other words, listen, even though you may not be a or an evangelist, a prophet or a pastor. Mm -hmm. Even though you may not be a deacon or a trustee, a choir member, or even a clerk. Sure. You may not be an usher or a missionary. Sure. I need you to understand that if you're not any of these, you are still needed in the body of Christ. Say it's right.
employ. Yes, you are. So 1 Corinthians 12 tells us, it says that all of us, you see, in all of us, there is no I. Uh -huh. All right. You are. 
they are important. There may be somebody here who needs to know that God sees you. He doesn't see the shadow that you are walking in, but he sees you just for who you are. Just as you are.